Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Bertrude and today we're using the build that is pretty much the ultimate pyro powerhouse. So this builds a level 168 build. We've got 60 bigger, 53 strength and 53 faith. We're using the opaline hard here for the damage negation and the flame knot to boost our fire attacks. And here's a quick look at the armor and talismans we're using on the build. We've got two main weapons on this build, the first one being the Magma Worm Scale Sword. Then we've also got the Cranial Vessel Candle Stand. As well as these, just for a bit of added utility, in our second weapon slots we'll be using two Magma Blade Curve Swords. We're then also using the incantations Catch Flame, Giant's Flame Take the Burn or Flame, Flame of the Fell God and then finally our buff, Flame Grant Me Strength. And that's the build guys, it's a really strong one. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the content, but it's time for you lot to sit back, relax and enjoy the video. So in the title of the thumbnail on this video, I referred to this build as being the Nuke Machine. And I think that's a pretty fitting title, this build is really capable of putting out some absolutely biblical damage. It's got the incantations that can just absolutely melt people. Giant's Flame Take the is just a beast of an incantation. Really, really powerful. And we're only using the one seal. If we use two of the giant seals, and you know the giant seal obviously boosts the damage from the giant's flame incantations. So if we were to use two of those, it would just take that damage to an absolute another level. But we're only using one and we're still getting some insane damage we're using that as well and we've also got the flame of the fell god this spell that we're putting up now that's that kind of big um, orb fire orb that tracks our opponents down and then it often ca it can often catch them out they usually forget when i've launched that sometimes you know i'll launch it and then we can carry on fighting we'll just be doing our thing we'll be having a good old scrap and then the flame of the fell god will work its way back around to our enemy and just explode all over them and it just destroys them so much damage when they get hit with it it's just an insane spell it's a really really good spell it can be easily dodged if you're in an open field and our opponents are savvy to what's actually happening but if it's in the heat of the moment and you manage to launch one of those off while you're fighting as i said they often do end up forgetting about it and it often leads to some really really stylish kills it's an absolute nuke when that goes off if it hits them the Flame of the Fell God is going to do some, you know, some, some really, really solid damage. Other incantations on the build, we've got the ever-reliable Catch Flame. You know, you cannot go wrong with Catch Flame on a Pyro build. In fact, I'd probably say it's quite an essential spell, actually, because when it comes to the rundowns, Catch Flame just can't be beaten. It just will not be beaten. I know on this build we've got the Magma Blades, the Curve Swords, that I just managed to get a kill on the host with there. We've got the Magma Blades which we can switch to so we do have a really really good rundown tool on this build in those and I do get a lot of kills using those. When I get my enemies down low health I can often switch to the Magma Blades to get some quick attacks but I also have the option to switch to the Catch Flame which can also be really good for chasing people down and getting that final bit of damage on them. This invasion that's happening in the background now is a really good example of how good Flame of the Fell God is. I actually managed to get a really, really nice kill with that incantation on this invasion, so if you keep an eye on that in the background, you'll see Flame of the Fell God in all its glory. <laughs> it's going to absolutely nuke the living hell out of this horse shortly. So keep an eye on that, that's coming up. And then besides our buff, Flame Grant Me Strength, which is just a no-brainer, we also have the incantation Burn or Flame. That's the one where you, you, know, you, you ignite the ground and you get all those big pillars of flame coming up out the ground. And it can do some good damage and it knocks our opponents up into the air. But to be honest, I find that incantation quite difficult to land. You've got to be really spot on with your timing of that incantation to land it. It's quite easy to be um, knocked out of. If you get attacked while you're trying to do it, it's easily, you know, it's easy to be stunned out of that attack. Uh, Flame of the Fell God in the background, by the way, just devastated that host. <laughs> Absolutely nuked him. But yeah, uh, Burn or Flame, uh, it's just a tricky one to land. I think it'd be, you know, it'd be a lot easier to land that if we had 
endure equipped on the on the build and we could endure and then try and get um, burn or flame off that would be you know up our success rate with that spell because obviously it would poise through the attacks and that would help us land a lot more but yeah burn or flame it's on the build i often do try and use it but i don't often land it i find it quite tricky to actually land The long and short of it really guys is that this is just a really really solid build. I think pyro builds in this game, if you build them right they're always going to do a hell of a lot of damage. You've got the seal that can boost um, the giant's flame incantations anyway, but then if we pair that with some high faith investment, you know, as well as some good weapons, we've got loads of options with our incantations. There's just so many ways I can kill you with this build. I can make explosions left, right and centre. I can turn the invasions into an absolute nightmare for the party. You know, there's explosions going everywhere. They've got to worry about my weapons. They don't know what's going to be coming at them next. I have so many options. We just absolutely destroyed that host with the Ash of War from the Magma Worms um, Scale Blade. Is that what it's called? The Magma Worm Scale Blade? I think that's what it's called. I love this curved sword, by the way. It looks. It just looks so gnarly look at it i think it's the best looking curve sword in the game um i like it because it kind of really changes the visuals of a curve sword a lot of the curve swords in the game you look at them and it's like oh that's just a standard curve sword but you know when i look at this one it really does change the visual aspect of the of the uh, great curve sword which is something i really love i think the beastman cleaver curve sword that's what it's called i think think that's what it's called if i'm if i'm right i may i may well be wrong on that one but i think it's called like the beastman's cleaver curve sword and that also does a similar thing it changes the visual look of the curve sword which is something i love with some of these weapons i just think it gives it you know an extra bit of style but i love this weapon i think it looks really cool i absolutely i'm obsessed with the ash of war on that curve sword i think it's an absolute beast of an ash of war it does some incredible damage and it's so stylish and looking at this weapon as well the cranial vessel candle stand this is such a unique great hammer it's so quirky it's so goofy looking but at the same time i think it quite fits the build you know it does some good damage and it's just all about the ash of war look at this just get absolutely nuked again another nuclear option that i've got on this build that summon there was just launching the skull emojis at me for fun in this invasion, just making my life a living hell. And he came running at me being all cocky. And don't underestimate this Ash of War, man. This cranial vessel candle stand. Ash of War is just ridiculous. Surge of Faith. That's what it's called, the Surge of Faith. They've got to be quite close to you, but if you've got an aggressive player just running at you like that, and you launch that Ash of War and they get caught in it, they're pretty much dead. They're pretty much dead, and if they're not dead, they're not going to have much health left. And, you know, with all the options that we've got on this build, I could just follow that up with any of my other attacks. Like, look at this guy now. Switch to the curve, the uh, curve blades here, the magma blades, just for an easy finish. But I could have easily just launched another giant's flame, take the at him, or I could have followed it up with a catch flame. Just so many options. And again, you know, magma shower on the curve swords. All of our weapons on this build have got nuke-like ashes of war. Massive, explosive ashes of war. It's just really strong. Watch this, guys. Got to do your white mask control. I hope you're all out there controlling the numbers. The white masks are still breathing. They're still all over the place, guys. We've got to keep those numbers down. Make sure you're doing your bit. I know I'm doing mine. No mercy for the white masks. It's all about population control, guys. We've got to keep on top of things or they're going to get a bit carried away, aren't they? It's going to get out of hand. We've got to stay on top of the white masks. <laughs> I'm doing my bit. You've got to do your bit as well, guys. Now, check this out here. We've got an absolute battle of the ages going on. We've got these two absolute geezers going at it with this massive big angry bird down here. This is a right old scrap. I must admit it did cross my mind to just go over and launch a big fire <laughs> launch a big fireball at them. But I instantly thought, no, I'm gonna let them have this fight. Let's just take a little back seat and watch the action for a minute. 
This was a really good scrap. I actually enjoyed watching this. Oh, he's using the Swords of the Night and Flame. Look at it. It's just epic. It's so cinematic. He's got the Moon Veil. They're, doing, they're double teaming him. One's taking one side. The other guy's taking the other side. This is a battle for the ages. He's going at him again with the Sword of the Night and Flame. The big laser beam. Explosions going off down there. They've got to watch that, guys. They can't get caught in the explosions as well. And they've killed him. The bird's dead. What a fight, guys. What an absolute war. What a battle. Give him a little celebration dance there. A little jiggle jiggle for the, for the celebration, for the win against the burr. Well done, boys. Well done. What a scrap. And a third one for you. Now, give you a little bob of justice there. And we get the return signal. And that means it's game on. I left them alone while they fought the burr. But they give me the little bob of justice. And now I'm just going to go and kill them both. <laughs> Now it's game time boys, I enjoyed the fight, you did a really good job killing that bear. But now you've got a nasty red man to kill. <laughs> Look at that, we nearly just killed a horse with a giant flame tatey. If there's anything about this build, it's that some of the incantations are just a little bit too strong. <laughs> like giant flame tatey is a great incantation. I think we're all aware at this point in the game how good that spell actually is, you know, it's very powerful. If you're, if you're an invader and you get a gank and someone's just throwing that at you constantly, it's horrible, isn't it? Let's be honest, it's absolutely horrible. But as an invader, using it as a tool against groups of players, it's really good. It's a really good equaliser and it can often be the difference between you just getting absolutely melted and you kind of not, um, evening out the playing field a little bit. Good invasion there. Well done with the burr, guys. But you weren't good enough to take out the nuke machine. A subject that I have been putting some thought into lately is the DLC and which build I'm going to do my first run through with on that. Now initially, my first thoughts when it came to which character I was going to use for the DLC was that I'd use the very first character I created. The character that I first completed the main game on. I, 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 th I felt like, you know, that's the character that deserves it almost. It's the character I've got the most time on, obviously, having played through the full game. I've discovered everywhere on it, everywhere's open. Like, when I invade on that build, I invade in a lot of places that I often don't on my other builds because, you know, I've not been to them. Like, there's quite a lot of places I don't always go when I'm making new characters, but on that build, everywhere's discovered. So when I go through invade on it, I get a lot of um, fresh invasion areas that I don't usually see, so that's always a nice change. You know, I thought that that build deserved the first playthrough of the DLC but you know I've run out of larval tears I can't respec it at this point it's just kind of quite a generic strength faith build and that's absolutely fine it's got some great weapons on it um, but it's just a weapon build so I was thinking that that's the build I was going to do the DLC with but having thought more into it I think I might actually use this build to do the DLC with the nuke machine again it's strength faith but this one, the fact that it's leaning into the incantations as well, we've got so many more options, the weapons on it are all a bit more unique. It's definitely more of a character build, whereas the other one that I was talking about is more just a generic weapons build, if you know what I mean. There's not really much going on with it besides the fact that it uses a particular set of weapons. And that's absolutely fine, you know, it could easily manage the DLC. But this one it just feels like more of a complete build it's at level 168 where the other one is at level 200 and I know that um, level for the DLC isn't really going to matter too much but I think I'd just be a bit more comfortable going into the DLC at level 168 rather than I would at level 200 so I'm thinking I still might change my mind but I'm thinking this is going to be the build that I approach the DLC with I can't think of a better option in my mind at the minute I know I've got a lot of builds to choose from but I think this would be a pretty good shout to do the DLC. This is a pretty funny invasion. The summon here, it's a bit of a mirror match. He's using a lot of the same spells that I am, if you keep an eye on him. He launches a few flame of the fell gods and I launch one back at him and there's a few big massive fireballs floating around. There's explosions going off all over the place and the ending to this invasion is quite funny as well. We actually have a double kill 
I'm not going to say anything else, I'll let it play out in the background, but this guys is actually the last invasion of the video. I hope you've had a good time watching this one. Um, it's a really strong build, like I say you will never ever go wrong with a pyro build in these games, they're always going to be really effective. But anyway guys, look after yourselves, look after each other, take it easy and I'll see you all in the next video.